Good day everyone. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about the measurement of capacitance using de Sorties bridge. Then we will be discussing about the modification of de Sorties bridge which is used for the measurement of capacitance. And in the second part of the lecture, we will be discussing about Sherrings bridge and how a Sherrings bridge can be used for the measurement of capacitance. The diagram shown here is of a de Sorties bridge. De Sorties bridge is used for measuring the values of unknown capacitance. De Sorties bridge is a very simple bridge. Now as seen in the diagram we can clearly make out that in the first arm only a single capacitor C1 is connected. C1 is the, C1 is the unknown capacitor that is we have to determine what is the value of C1. Then we have in the second arm we have a C2. It is a standard capacitor whose value is known. Then we have R3 and R4 in the third and fourth branches. R3's and R4 value is also known. These are non-inductive resistors that they do not have any inductive component L. They are purely resi resistive components only. Right? Now moving further we can see here that an AC supply E is connected. The first branch, the voltage across first branch is E1, second branch is E3. In this manner E3 and E4 I am getting. In the, through the first branch and second uh, third branch current I1 is flowing. Through the second branch and fourth branch current I2 is flowing after in at the balance condition. Now detector is also used. Detector is used for determining the balance condition. Now as we already we have discussed we know what is the bridge balance condition. Bridge balance condition using the bridge balance condition I am writing Z1 the impedance of Z1 branch is 1 by J omega C1 Z2 is 1 by J omega C2 Z3 R3 R4 now what I am doing is I am substituting the values substituting the values we can clearly make out both I don't have any real terms here I only have imaginary terms here so equating the imaginary terms I get what is the value of C1 the value of C1 is C1 is equal to C2 into R4 by R3. C2's value is known. R4 and R3 both values are known. Out of R4 and R3 any one can be a variable resistor. Uh, variable resistor are required for balancing the for bridge balancing. Right. Now from this we can clearly make out either by using R3 or R4 the bridge balance can easily be obtained. Here we can see that the expression that we have got is very simple. The balance of the bridge can be obtained very easily. That is in the expression if I check there is no frequency component. All these are some of the advantages of using de Sorties bridge. But when I am talking about the disadvantage of de Sorties bridge. De Sorties bridge has a disadvantage that it is not able to calculate any losses or any dielectric losses that are happening or any dissipation losses that are happening in a capacitor. It will not be accounted for when I am using a de Sorties bridge. Now for that we will be discussing about a modified de Sorties bridge. Now before that let us look into the phasor diagram of a de Sorties bridge. As, as we know that for reference I am starting with current I1. Now starting with current I1 I, I know that in the third arm it is a resistor so the voltage and voltage component and current component will be uh, in the same phase for a resistive component therefore I am getting I1 R3 in same phase with I1 then I can clearly make out that I1 current is also flowing through the capacitor now the vo voltage will lag in a capacitor therefore I am getting I1 by omega C1 I am getting here right now it is clearly understood that uh, I am having a oh, capacitor I am having so this capacitor uh, it is uh, the capacitor only capacitor is there in the first term therefore this is equal to E1 now also we know that the voltage drop across E1 and E2 will be equal then only bridge will be balanced therefore E1 is equal to E2 so in that same manner this is the component of I2 omega C2 that I am getting then I1 R3 is my E3 voltage. I know that E3 voltage should be equal to E4 for the bridge to be balanced. Therefore I2 R4 also I will be getting in phase or at uh, same levels with I3 uh, I1 R3. So it can it is clearly understood that I1 and I2 will be in same phase. So this is the point. This point is E3 or e, E3 and E4. This point is nothing but E1 and E2. Now to find out the total voltage E what I have to do I have to take a phasor sum. So taking the phasor sum I am getting the total, total voltage E. Now from this I can clearly make out the voltage it is lagging the currents I1 and I2. 
by some angle alpha right now moving further let us look into a modified de Sorti's bridge the diagram that is shown here it is of a modified de Sorti's bridge now in modified de Sorti's bridge what I have done is to the capacitor C1 a component R1 is connected in series For to the capacitor C2 a component R2 is connected small resistors R1 and R2 are also connected now these represent the loss components in the capacitor because the capacitors that we are using the capacitor cannot be purely capacitive it is only possible theoretically practically speaking the capacitor will also have a resistive component because of which some losses are happening and that loss component is de denoted using small r1 and small r2 that is if i'm talk if i have to talk about a capacitor this is the full capacitor the voltage across capacitor is ec1 now voltage across this capacitor is ec2 now moving further in the third arm i am having r3 in the fourth arm i am having r4 as in the similar in the previous case through arms 1 and through arm 3 current I1 is flowing through arm 2 and 4 current I2 is flowing now and under bridge balance condition E1 and E2 will be equal E3 and E4 will be equal and no current will flow across uh, across the detect across the detector arm so this is clearly understood case for bridge balance condition the voltage supply that I am having is E now let us move further moving further let us look into the bridge balance equation at bridge balance condition what will happen we clearly know z1 z4 is equal to z2 z3 now i can write the impedance z1 is equal to r1 plus r1 plus 1 by j omega c1 because all components are in series then z2 similarly i can write z2 z3 is equal to r3 z4 is equal to r4 i'll substitute all these values substituting all these values i get the value is equal to c1 by c2 is equal to r2 plus small r2 capital r1 plus r1 is equal to r4 by r3 this is the value that i am getting right so we'll discuss about this dissipation factor after discussing about the phasor diagram this is about dissipation factor so dissipation factor is because of some losses that are happening in the capacitor now before discussing that let us come into the phasor diagram now for phasor diagram what i have done is i have taken i1 to be my reference now when i am taking i1 to be my reference i know from the arms 1 and 3 current i1 is flowing in the arm that is in the third arm i can clearly make out the uh, the it is purely resistive therefore this is i1 r3 so i1 r3 is nothing but i can take it to be e3 i also know that when i am talking about my first arm in my first arm resistor r1 is there so this is the voltage drop across resistor r1 this is the voltage drop across my resistor r2 that is because of the uh, in in the capacitor some uh, resistive component is there so because the losses across those resistive component is i1 r1 then i know that the voltage in a capacitor will always be lagging therefore this is the lagging component this is i1 omega c1 now as we have seen ec1 is nothing but it is the combination of c1 and r1 voltage drops across c1 and r1 now this is the voltage so what i'll do to to derive i1 uh, ec1 i'll take a phasor sum in between i1 and r1 and i1 and omega c1 i1 by omega c1 so i get ec1 so in that similar manner for when i'm talking about i1 so this is i1 from i1 i have got i3 that is i1 r3 i have got now we know that e3 and e4 will be equal so e3 is equal to e4 when i am writing so e4 is nothing but my i2 r4 so that clearly means that i2 will also be in same phase with i1 so here i am getting i1 and i2 to be in same phase so therefore i2 r2 and small i2 r2 in that manner when i am talking about e1 is equal to e2 it means that the capacitive voltage should also be equal therefore i1 uh, so i am getting this uh, that is i uh, i is equal to i2 by omega c2 so the this is the value of ec2 that i am getting right now to find out what is the value of e1 what i have to do is i have to add the value the uh, the values across the resistive drops and the across the capacitor so this is ec ec1 and this is uh, i1 r1 so taking the phasor sum so this is the point that i am coming to that is this is equal to e1 so it is it is clearly understood that e1 and e2 is equal that is they are equal for bridge balance conditions so therefore i will get the same point for if i am taking i2 r2 and ec2 i will get this same point i will be getting now to find out what is e 
these two point these two are the phases i have to take the phasor sum so taking the phasor sum i am getting this to be equal to e now from this it is clearly we can understand that the total voltage it is lagging current i1 and i2 right now when we are talking when we are discussing about dissipation factor dissipation factor was nothing but the angle form between the voltage drop across the capacitive component and the total voltage drop across the capacitor now when i am taking the angle drop between i1 omega c1 and ec1 so i am getting a component del1 i am getting now when i am taking the voltage drop between ec2 or the angle difference between ec2 and i2 by omega c2 i am getting del2 i am getting now these are the two values that i have got okay let me sketch it here let me sketch it here now sketching it here this was my i1 small r1 and this was my uh, i2 by sorry i1 by omega c1 and this was my angle del1 okay right now let us check d1 is equal to tan del1 so tan del1 is nothing but omega c1 r1 how i am getting omega c1 by r1 perpendicular by base the perpendicular was the value of perpendicular was i1 r1 divided by the value of base was i1 by omega c1 now calculating that i get the value of d1 is equal to omega c1 by r1 omega c2 r2 right now let us derive the expressions in terms of uh, dissipation factor these are the two dissipation factors that i have got this this expression i am taking and writing it here this expression i am taking and writing it here so from this i get c1 is equal to c2 into r4 by r3 i am getting now what i am doing is i am trying to resolve this i am cross multiplying cross multiplying i am getting this expression i am getting now to this expression i am adding omega i am adding now when i am ome adding omega omega c2 r2 is nothing but d2 omega c1 r1 is nothing but d1 so i am getting d2 minus d1 is equal to omega c2 r4 i am getting this now what i am doing is i am taking omega c2 common so based on this based on dissipation factor i am getting this expression i am getting now from this expression we can clearly make make out that is if the dissipation factor of one capacitor is known i can easily calculate the dissipation factor of the other capacitor that is the capacitor c2 that i am using this is the val this is the capacitor that i am connecting which is having a known value so when it is a known value i'll clear clearly be knowing what is the value of the dissipation factor so if dissipation factor of one capacitance is known i can easily calculate dissipation factor of the other capacitance now this bridge has a disadvantage that is this factor that is the dissipation factor it depends on the resistance values and the dissipation factor cannot be determined accurately that is uh, if the resistance if the if r1 this r1 cannot be found out separately for a capacitor if i am taking a capacitor i cannot calculate what is the r value small resistance value of a capacitor so as this cannot be calculated accurately i cannot accurately determine what is the dissipation factor of a capacitor now moving further the next bridge that i am having is a sharing bridge now looking at sharing bridge this sharing bridge is also used for measuring the value of unknown capacitance now here c1 is the capacitance whose value has to be determined now r1 is the uh, com component which represent the loss occurring in my capacitor c1 c2 is a standard capacitor that we are using r3 is a non inductive resistor this is uh, c4 is a variable capacitor that we are using and r4 is also a variable capacitor that we that we are using detector detector can either be a headphone or it can be any galvanometer now as we know that e1 should be equal to e3 e2 should be equal to e4 for bridge balance condition and in the center arm no current should be flowing so this is the supply that i am using e ac supply that is used now let us move further for bridge balance condition we know for bridge balance condition z1 z4 is equal to z2 z3 now i am writing z1 the resistive component and capacitive component are in uh, are in series z2 1 by j omega c2 that is only capacitive component is present z3 r3 z4 that is here r4 and uh, c4 both are in parallel therefore i am getting this substituting these values and 
equating further i can uh, what i am doing is i am separating the real term and imaginary term separating real term and imaginary term i can get the value of small r1 is equal to r3 c4 by c2 that is r1 is nothing but the resistive component of the capacitor whose values we have to determine and c1 the value of c1 can also be determined and we know that from d1 from the previous expressions d1 tan del i can write it to be omega c1 r1 right now we know that what is the value of c1 we know what i am doing is i am taking the value of c1 i, I am substituting the value of c1 for c1 what i am doing is this value i am substituting substituting that what i am i am getting is i will be getting an expression d1 is equal to omega c4 into r4 that is oh, the dissipation factor can solely be de determined depending on what is the value of unknown uh, sorry variable resistor and variable capacitor the value of dissipation factor and capacitance c1 can easily be obtained from the values of bridge elements at balance condition right now here we have some advantages that for calculating c1 only one resistor ca can be calibrated to get the values for fixed frequency if i am having the value of frequency to be fixed only varying the value of c4 it can get the it i, I can directly find out the dissipation factor d1 directly right some of the disadvantages of this bridge is that the calibration for dissipation factor will hold good only for one frequency value if the ac supplies frequency is changing i cannot easily calculate what is the uh, what is the dissipation factor now speaking about r3 appear in both the both the equations so if it is variable there will be some difficulty to uh, obtain bridge balance as r3 is present in both the expressions r3 if it is variable r1 value for r c1 for both these values r it will be dependent on r3 so r3 should not be a variable element as far as i am concerned about this bridge now moving on to for sharing bridge now here we can let us look into the phasor diagram of sharing bridge now looking at the phasor diagram what i have done is i am taking i1 to be my reference i1 is take uh, i1 is taken to be my reference now when i am taking i1 to be my reference current i1 flows through r3 so therefore i am getting this to be r3 now e3 this is my e3 component now e3 component we know that this e3 should be equal to e4 so this should be equal to e4 now let us look into this a little, little later now moving further i know that i1 r1 that is a resistive component of the capacitor i1 r1 should be in this only then i i have to find out what is the value of uh, the voltage drop across the capacitor the voltage drop of, across the capacitor will be uh, lagging by 90 degrees so i am getting i1 by omega c1 now taking the phasor sum of both this component i am getting e1 to be somewhere somewhere here now e2 when i am talking about e2 e2 will also be this element only the, uh, e2 why because we know that at under bridge balance condition e1 and e2 should be same right so in this manner i am getting e uh, e2 i am getting now i now talking about e4 we have as we have already seen e3 and e4 will be equal therefore when i when i am talking about e4 uh, in e4 we are having two components we are having so the first component that is ic the i uh, sorry the first component c and r both these are in parallel so when these are in parallel it means that the voltage across my capacitor and voltage across my resistor both should be equal right so if this is e4 it clearly means that this will be equal to ic by omega c4 and this will be equal to i4 ir into r4 now when i am getting ir into r4 it means that it is the resistive component for a resistive component always voltage and current will be in same phase therefore i am getting ir to be in same phase now when i am talking about a capacitor in capacitor the current will lead the voltage by 90 degree that is approximately 90 degree so therefore i will be getting this to be ic now when i am taking the phasor sum of ic and ir taking the phasor sum of ic and ir i get i2 to be in this phase right now looking at i2 and e2 we can clearly make out that i2 and e2 are approximately 90 degree so in this manner i'll i am getting what is the value uh, i am getting the values of voltage e1 e2 and e3 e4 now to find out the value of e what i have to do is i have to take the phasor sum between e1 uh, uh, the phasor, uh, phasor sum between e1 and e3 or phasor sum between e2 and e4 adding that i get e now here from this i can clearly make out i1 is leading e 
and I2 is leading I1 and E as well. 